Take a moment to imagine what the future will look like. When I was younger, I thought my future world would look like this. But what if this was our future? You see, right now, we're fighting an invisible war. Currently, the casualties of this war number in the tens of thousands around the world. By the year 2050, that death toll is expected to reach 10 million people per year. And these deaths could be from things as simple as a visit to the dentist, a routine surgery, or even a small cut while gardening. Our nemeses are so tiny that they're practically invisible, but they are deadly. They go by the name superbugs, bacteria armed with weapons of antibiotic resistance. But we may have a weapon of our own to stop these superbugs in their tracks. Honey. Antibiotic resistance is one of the biggest threats to global health, food security, and development today. It doesn't discriminate. It can affect anyone of any age and in any country. Already, we're seeing cases of people dying from superbugs that are resistant to every single antibiotic that we currently have. So how do superbugs get so super that antibiotics don't work against them anymore? To understand this, let's first talk about antibiotics. Now, antibiotics are drugs that are designed to kill bacteria or slow down their growth, all the while leaving the human cells unharmed. They can be narrow spectrum, effective only against certain types of bacteria, or broad spectrum, meaning they work against a whole range of different bacteria. Generally, we like this broad-spectrum approach because we don't always know the type of bacteria that's causing an infection and because infections usually involve more than one type of bacteria. Now, different antibiotics can target different things in bacteria. For example, we've got some that can destroy the protective cell wall and some that affect certain proteins, like those that are involved in helping one bacterial cell divide into two. <laughs> Since their discovery in the 1940s, antibiotics have made many previously dangerous or deadly diseases easily treatable. But today, more and more of our antibiotics are becoming less and less effective. Now, the problem isn't with the drugs themselves, but because the bugs change to fight off the effects of these antibiotics. This is when a normal bug becomes a superbug. Just like all other living things, bacteria evolve to deal with changes and pressures in their environment. Sometimes they evolve a super trait in their DNA. And this gives them a competitive edge in survival, like the ability to resist antibiotics. These superbugs then pass on their super DNA to their offspring, and also swap and share their super DNA with others. Before long, we have whole armies of superbugs that are now resistant to multiple drugs. Traditionally, antibiotics were found in nature because bacteria and other microbes are everywhere. They're in the water, in the soil, in the air, on our skin, and even inside of us and they're always competing with each other in a game of survival. To keep each other in check, they use their own biological weapons, antibiotics. In fact, the first antibiotic, penicillin, was discovered from mold trying to keep those pesky bacteria in check. And now, we're reverting back to nature to find new ones. Since the dawn of time, honey has been used as a medicine by every culture that's had access to it, and we've got records of this shown in rock paintings and carvings, and sacred texts from many ancient cultures around the world. Honey has been used to treat a wide range of ailments, ranging from eye and throat infections to gastroenteritis. But its most popular and most effective use is as a topical application to treat wounds, burns, ulcers, and skin infections.
Now, the reason for its continued use is no doubt because honey has potent, broad-spectrum antibacterial activity. Although the ancient cultures probably didn't use that exact wording since we didn't learn about the invisible world of bacteria until much later. Now, not all honeys are equal, though. Honey is incredibly complex and has over 200 components that are influenced by environmental factors as well as the floral source. So in the same way that different honeys can look and taste very different, they can also have very different medicinal properties. The activity of honey comes from multiple factors. First, honey is made up mostly of sugar, and this can dehydrate or dry out the bacteria. Another factor is that honey is acidic, and most bacteria can't tolerate this. So these two properties are common for all types of honey, including the one that you guys have at home in your pantries. But it only makes up a very small amount of the activity. So while these pantry honeys are great for spreading on toast, their activity isn't strong enough to treat infections. In most honeys that have very high levels of activity, it's usually because of the production of hydrogen peroxide, which is bleach, and it's toxic to bacteria. And finally, there are some very rare honeys with a special type of activity that we don't see in any other type of honey. Now, this activity is linked to the floral source, and the most famous example of a honey like this is Manuka honey from New Zealand. It's the most commonly used medical-grade honey because of this special activity, and it's the one that a lot of my research is based on. Probably the most exciting thing about honey is that even though we've been using it for thousands of years, bacteria have never learned to become resistant to it. And we can't get them to become resistant in the lab either, like we can with antibiotics. So even superbugs that are resistant to lots of other antibiotics aren't safe around honey. It can wipe these out, just as easily as normal bugs. Honey-based wound care products are available in pharmacies without a prescription for home use and in hospitals for clinical use in lots of countries around the world, including Australia. Unfortunately, these are still often overlooked, underutilized, or only used as a last resort. Here we've got an example of an 88-year-old patient who has extensive leg ulcers on both her legs. Now, she couldn't walk due to extreme pain, and she was suffering from recurrent superbug infections for over 20 years. All of the antibiotic treatments she had tried in that time had failed, and her doctors were now at the point of amputating both her legs. One of her nurses suggested using honey, and within just 10 weeks, those infections had cleared, her wounds had healed, and this patient could walk again. So in this lady's case, the honey had literally saved her legs. So if we know that honey works, why aren't we using it in place of antibiotics in the clinic? Part of it is because honey is still seen as an alternative rather than a real medicine, so we need to change these social attitudes. Another reason is that although we know it does kill superbugs, we don't fully understand how it does that but that's something that our research team at UTS is currently working on. We know that because the activity of honey comes from multiple factors, the honey also targets multiple things in the bacteria, so they get overwhelmed and they can't fight off all of these attacks. By figuring out how honey kills these superbugs without resistance, we can develop new drugs that work in the same way. We can also use this to promote the use of honey in the clinic, saving those antibiotics for when we really need them. By doing this, we're actively reducing the occurrence of antibiotic resistance. So, if we all rush out and start using honey, are we going to run out? The short answer is no, probably not. Currently, New Zealand is the main supplier of this medical manuka honey to the rest of the world. But the plant from which we get this honey is also native to Australia. Here, we call it jelly bush, or the scientific name, leptospermum. Better yet, we have over 80 closely related species growing all around our country, so we still have a huge resource of this medical-grade honey. Our research team has recently shown that the many Australian varieties are at least as potent as New Zealand manuka. One of the most common questions I get asked is, how does my work affect the bees? Currently, people are very aware that the bees are under threat, and without them, our food options would be very limited. Are we hurting the bees by using this much honey? 
Again, the short answer is no. Healthy bees need good, experienced beekeepers, and beekeepers need sustainable incomes. So by increasing the demand for and value of our honeys, we're helping support our local beekeepers and ensuring that our honeybee populations remain healthy and well looked after. We are fighting an invisible war, but we certainly don't need to go in blind. Honey may be the weapon we need to get us out of this sticky situation with superbugs. Thank you. Thank you.